Hi, my name is Charles, and I serve here at Transformation Church as one of the executive pastors. And I want to take a moment before we jump into the message just to say thank you, first of all, for watching. It means the world to us that you would be a part, no matter where you're watching from, no matter who you are. I'm believing that this message is going to encourage your faith and hopefully transform your life. If you haven't yet, make sure you take a moment, subscribe to the YouTube channel, not for us, but really for you. We want to be a resource to encourage your faith and be with you on this journey of following Jesus. Again, thank you so much for joining us. Enjoy the message today. I hope it blesses you. This series, I don't know if y'all noticed that my preaching is a little different since I've come back from sabbatical. If you checked in with me, there's another level of dominion. There's another level of authority. I'm nine years almost into pastoring this church. I'm not guessing no more. Who comes, who leaves, really don't matter. I'm called. So when I stand up here, there's another level of authority and anointing that I'm standing with right now that I'll be honest, in years prior, I was trying to convince people of what I knew. Now I'm just going to tell you. If you believe it or not, it's on you. But I have proof in my life in areas that don't get posted on Instagram. That the principles of God, everybody say, they work. they work. You didn't try everything. You out here believing scammers on Instagram, sending them $19.99 a month to figure out. Some of y'all in stuff and you, you forgot you was in it. You've been in it since 2020. Can't find your money, watching these people trying to get motivated to do what the principles of God, if you just actually did them, it would produce in your life. And so today, as we are in a series about being damaged but not destroyed, I want to teach you how to go from trauma to triumph today. Because we've talked about our damage a lot. We've talked about what we've gone through. We've made a decision that we are going to deal with our issues. Some of you, I want to, I want to stop for everybody who's made a therapy appointment. I want to right now give it up for you right now. Oh, y'all can do better than that. I know the guilt is setting in for some people who said they were, but we're going to thank God. At this church, we believe in therapy and theology. We believe in prayer and going to a practice. We believe that it starts in an encounter with God at the altar, but many times it's fleshed out in communication through counseling. And um, today I'm going to give you practical handles of how to take some steps to go from trauma to triumph. And um, I'm going to read a, a passage of scripture. If you have your Bibles, James chapter 1, verse 12. We are in week six of a series called Damage but not destroy. Y'all, it's getting gooder and gooder and better and better. James chapter 1, verse 12. God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Somebody should shout right there. No, 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 not out of ignorance. Shout because this last season, you've endured testing and temptation. The reward of that is that God blesses you. If that's the season you've been in, go ahead and give God praise right there. Okay. So after you've endured testing and temptation afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. And remember, when you are being tempted, do not say, God is tempting me. Stop sending me them thoughts, Lord. Stop letting that scroll up on my Instagram. God is tempting me. God is never tempting you to do wrong. And he never tempts anyone else. But let me tell you where temptation comes from. Temptation comes from our own desires, which entice us and drag us away. These desires have a baby and they give birth to sinful actions. And when sin is allowed to yeah, live and grow, it gives birth to death. When I was looking at this scripture, I saw the cycle of sin. And, and, and what we have to do to disarm the enemy's power in our life is understand our opponent. If you've ever played a sport, the first thing you need to know is who we playing. Because depending on who's on the other side of the court or the field, 
It determines how I'm going to approach this battle. And most of us come at the enemy like he's playing fair. But the word of God gives us his playbook. He has no new schemes. So let me teach you the enemies or the opposition's play so you can learn it and you can work against it with understanding. So did you see how all of us get played by sin? It's a cycle, or you could say it's a pattern. Your desire, actions, growth, death. Put it on the screen, because some of them looking at me. This is what the scripture just said. Your desires get together and birth sinful actions. Your sinful actions have a baby. And what, okay, I'm going to read the scripture to you one more time. And I want, you, I want you to listen to it very slowly. Temptation comes from our own desires. You never do anything that you didn't somewhere deep down desire to do. The devil didn't make you do it. He hyped you up to do it. The devil been after me. No, no, no. He's just been encouraging you in what was already there. If it wasn't in there, he wouldn't have nothing to help grow. The reason you're enraged is because there's somewhere in there that that anger has been able to fester. And what God is saying is your desires produce actions, which if they're allowed to grow, it produces um, if I understand the pattern of the devil, I can interrupt his pattern. Okay. Okay. I want to be in a relationship now. My desire. And I've been focusing on that desire and comparing myself to other people who have what I think that I desire. And it is coming up to my birthday, and I don't want to be alone for my birthday, even if I have to be a side chick. So, so I'll, I'll lower my standard to feel something. And we didn't do it many times, but just, just once. Or twice a week. <laughs> that, that, that grew into now, I'm his sneaky link. Some of y'all like, Jan, sneaky link. What, is that an attachment on an email? <laughs> it, 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 it's an attachment, all right. It's called a soul tie. And, and you're okay now and, 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 and almost prideful to know that he doesn't claim you, but y'all have a secret relationship. And it's able to grow until the point where it kills the desire in you, death, to live in purity. This is the, everybody say cycle. Or it's the, everybody say pattern. Okay. But if the devil has a pattern, that means that our God as well has a pattern. And it's just a little different, but it leads to a whole nother place. Philippians 2, 13, my favorite scripture. Remember, the death and sin cycle starts with your desire. But Philippians 2, 13 says, for God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. So the next pattern that we need to learn is God's desire, godly actions, those grow and it leads to, everybody shout at me, life. That's why the Bible says that the Son of Man came that we might have life and life to the full. But the thing that you have to realize is the right pattern and the wrong pattern are all based on who starts the pattern. So if you start the pattern 
at four years old trying to self-soothe because you weren't seen by your parents. You continue that pattern that leads to actions that lead to growth, that lead to death, and now you're 48 years old. And you can't figure out why this pattern has taken you from where you really want to be to where you never thought you would be. It's the source of who started the pattern. And today I'm asking every person under the sound of my voice is to examine every pattern in your life and ask yourself who started it. Did I start it for protection? Did I start it to feel love? Did I start it to survive? All patterns were not started out of an evil place. Some of us hit the weed to, to survive all the abuse that was happening in our household. Okay, y'all want to be fake today. You judging people about the end result of death in their life. But some people started because they were just trying to survive. Nobody who's a thug wanted to be a thug. When you don't know where your next meal is coming from, you then desire to eat and it might make you shank somebody. Is it right? No. But that's what sin is. It is trying to feel a le legitimate desire in an illegitimate way. So every person who's judgy right now, even being religious, is some of your way of trying to make yourself feel better about yourself. Because nobody ever affirmed you. Well, I'm going to learn more than everybody else. What does 1 Thessalonians 6, 19 say? I don't know. But you're me. And the truth of the matter is whatever word you have, there's no fruit in your life. I don't want to be around you. And somehow you go home making comments about people thinking you're better than them. You started that pattern. You never see Jesus doing that. Okay, let me stop. Write this down. The pattern that starts with you will always end with problems. The pattern that starts with you will always end with problems. I need you to think about how you handle conflict. When did you start going off like that? And only three people have seen it. And it's usually the three people you love the most. Some of you husbands would never treat your coworkers like you treat your wife. And some of you wives check up on your friends more than you check up on your husband. <laughs> Them claps is... <laughs> Some of you talk to your children in ways that you despised being talked to. But why does it come out of you so freely now? Because it is a pattern. And because you never got any other language to communicate. Because I said so. You used to hate when your parents said, because I said so. You used to have whole debates at, with your friends, like, but that's so dumb. Then my parents said, because I said so. Give me a reason. And now you at the same place, emotionally drained, with no time and energy for the seeds you prayed for God to give you. And the pattern hasn't broken. Okay, I love you. The pattern that starts with you will always end with problems. But the pattern that starts with God will always end in power. Because the scripture said he will give you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. That means many of us need to go and confront not our problems. The problems are a byproduct of the pattern. Oh my God. I can tell you where your life is and where it is going. Not by the problems you're facing right now, 
but by the patterns that created those problems. And many of us have been living in problem-solving mode, and you should be in pattern-solving mode. Oh my gosh. I am talking to you because every time you get hot and bothered, what are you watching? It just seems to be for some reason after you watch that one show on HBO that's so artistically enthusiastic, but it got a few scenes in there that'll arouse the dog in you. <laughs> Come on, y'all. And you watching it like I'm, I'm good. I mean, okay, all right. That's what they did in the medieval times. Okay. <laughs> I feel that. And you watching ESPN and can't go to sleep. It's a pat. Step back and just ask yourself, is the problem my pattern? Because we're talking about dealing with our damage. We can get healed and be right back in it. Delivered and right back in it. Went to therapy and right back in it. Not because we didn't address the problem, because we did not address the pattern. I'm, I feel my help coming on. Today, I want to let you know something. This is the title of my sermon. <laughs> Patterns that prophesy. Everybody want a prophetic word. God, tell me where I'm going to be next year. 2024, I want more. 2024, it's going to be the year of an open door. 2024, I'm actually going to have abs in my core. Not if you don't check the pattern. Your patterns are prophesying your future. Don't go stand in a line and pay for miracle water. Because I can prophesy to you right now. Show me your bank account. I'll tell you, you'll be broke next year. Because of the pattern of spending you have. And God can give you an influx of resources. And just give you enough time. And you'll be Louis, Gucci, and big screen TV down. And your pattern will end you back up in the same place that you are right now. Your pattern is prophetic. Where's my marriage going to be? Jacked up. Because y'all don't talk. Your business partners, you make sure that the accounts are settled and the kids eat. And that y'all lie about going on date nights, but you're just on your phone the whole time. But the, the pattern is killing your progress. And the truth of the matter is, the church, we do a good job at telling people where their purpose is going to be. And how they're going to go to this place and the palace and the promises. We need more message about the pattern. Because God can use you greatly and it still be your patterns that jack you up. This ain't in my notes, but it's coming to my heart. Samson, strongest man alive, but had a pattern of laying with women that he knew was trying to kill him. He thought he was strong enough to reach purpose and still play with the pattern. And some of y'all have been in this same place where God has gifted you. He's given you power and strength in an area. And you still playing with patterns that are going to end up taking your sight and killing you in the end. Ooh. Patterns are prophetic. I thought about what I could do to show y'all the power of patterns. Everybody shot at me patterns the power of patterns and so I decided my example today I'm gonna go to the studio is it okay if I break the pattern of our regular Sunday service and I do something different right now I said is it okay okay so I'm a cameraman follow me I'm gonna go to the studio real quick most of y'all know 
that I used to be a music producer before God asked me to be a pastor. And one of the things that we have to understand, man, I'm so glad you're here today. One of the things that I'm so glad you're here today. One of the things you got to understand, what's up, big daddy? You all right? Hey, you fly. I like the glasses. Yes. One of the things that we have to do when you're doing music production is you have to be concerned about, everybody shout at me, patterns. I love y'all. Thank y'all so much for coming today. So many people make music based off of patterns. It's like one, two, three, four. It's one, two, three, one, two, three. There's different patterns that we have. And so I'm going to go into the studio right now. And uh, what's up, Javi? You good, baby? Yes, sir. All right. Let me get set up. They got me a little, a little set up back here right now. Can y'all hear me out there? Yeah. Oh, no, no. I need y'all to make some noise. Can y'all hear me out there? I got to make sure. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So I'm in the studio right now with Hav, and uh, let me see. Uh, I like that. I'm going to just build the basic pattern. I like that. Whoa. Ooh. I like that. All right, let's just build a basic pattern real quick. Y'all feel that? Oh, okay. So right here, uh-oh. We took the lights out this mug. <laughs> like, 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 this is a basic pattern and some of y'all groove into this pattern right here. I see you right there. And then I can add to it. But the truth about this pattern is it's set. It will not change until somebody puts their hands on what is going to continue to stay the same. 15 minutes from now, if I don't put my hands on this pattern, it will prophesy the future. Everything that you do and every place that you are, that you abdicate and don't let God through you put your hands on, it stays the same. And people can be grooving to a beat that will not produce the full manifestation of what God wants to do in your life. I'm preaching this thing right now. Some of you need to decide today that it's not the beat that it's the problem. It's that I have not put my hands on the pattern. And I believe that God is going to tell some of y'all it's time to remix your life. <laughs> it's time to throw some stuff in there. Oh, I like that. Some of y'all better jam with me. Let's turn the 808 on. Let's go. Woo! I like it. Do you see how it's coming alive? The music is changing right now. It's because I am beginning to work on the pattern. Oh, I feel this thing. Let's break it down just a little bit. Let's go like this. Some of y'all used to be in the club. Stop acting brand new. You like that. But this is a beautiful thing. What if there's some things in my life that I don't need to get rid of? I just need to filter them. Listen to this. I can filter. The noise needs to be turned down. Woo! I feel like playing a little bit. Just give me a second. Whoa! Yeah. God's changing the pattern. Oh, I feel that. Hey, I need everybody to do me a set. Do me a favor. If you're in the room or if you're in your house, I need you to stand up right now and we're gonna change the pattern. I need you to turn up. Everybody clap your hands like, hey, I'm coming out there. I need you to party. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go, everybody, everybody, everybody like, oh. Let's go, everybody, real quick, like, we breaking the...
a pattern of service. Let's go. And I. Just one more time, you say overflow. Hey, I love this day. Where? Hey. Sing overflow. Hey. Will y'all give God some praise right now? Okay. Sit down. The power of that whole moment was in the pattern. And until I put my hand on the pattern, until I put my creativity around the pattern, okay, until I put knowledge around the, everything stayed the same. The message. There we go. We got it. Okay. The power is in the. I said the power is in the. The power is in the. If you don't like the music of your life. You have to change the beat. You want a different tempo? You want to go at a pace that your family can go at? You, 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 you want to you wanna be able to actually have margin enough to love your neighbor? Some of us are just too busy to love our neighbor. I got soccer practice. I got lacrosse practice. I have my hair to get done every Tuesday. I have a nail appointment every Thursday because I have to do the Instagram pose of me holding my steering wheel. <laughs> and you've been to that nail tech 200 times and they don't even know you love God. It's time to check the pattern because what's not transformed is transferred. Your patterns, watch this, are going to be given to your children. Watch this. Good measure. Press down. Shaken together. And running over will men and women put in their children's lap what they did not deal with. We always want to use it when it's time for offering. It's also used when it's time for offense. The way you get offended, good measure. Press down, shaking together and running over. This is why we have to address patterns that prophesy. This next year, don't ask God to give you a prophetic word. Ask him to show you your patterns. Okay. Okay. Y'all don't believe me. And the reason you don't believe me is because like, where's the word, Pastor Mike? Show me in the Bible that your patterns prophesy. Let's talk to Abraham. Because Abraham had many sons. And many sons had. Oh, oh. And I am. And so are you, hey, so let's all pray the right on, left on, right on. Y'all remember, y'all went to the same youth camp I did. But what was the first part of that? Father Abraham had many. And many sons had what Father Abraham had. So the sons had no say in coming into the world. Father Abraham, he had many sons. That, that didn't, but the sons also had what Father Abraham had. And we talk about it. We had faith. Guess what else Abraham had? He had a lying problem. I got to run through this quick. Abraham lied about Sarai being his wife. He was scared, and I don't know what kind of fine Sarah was, but she was so, she might be Natalie Todd fine. She was so fine 
that he was like, I got to tell him you're my sister because <laughs> they might kill me to get to you. And they walked into the palace. He was like, this is my sister, Sarai. And he lied to Pharaoh to save himself out of fear. And he thought it was a little white lie. But Father Abraham had many sons and many sons had lying from Father Abraham because Isaac was his son. And Isaac did the same thing in lying and he even did it in the same town. He wasn't even to escape. He wasn't even able to escape the proximity. That thing was so strong that the lying in him happened at the same place the same way. But Isaac had many sons and many sons had Isaac lying in them. Because y'all remember Esau and Jacob, right? The pattern that Abraham started prophesied for generations. And now literally his son Jacob says, I'm not even going to lie to somebody outside of my family. I'm going to lie to my brother who is my twin. The person who's supposed to be closest to me, I'm going to deceive him. And he learned it. The seed was in him from his father Isaac, but it was nurtured by his manipulated mama. Y'all got to read the Bible. What happens when you get the crap from both sides? What happens when your mom's side of the family are liars and manipulators and your dad's side of the family have addictions and secrets and nobody stands up and deals with it? And you supposed to just be good? It's a miracle you here today. <laughs> because patterns prophesy. Write this down. It's not that God's promise isn't working. It's that your pattern is working. It's not that the promises of God are not working. His promises are working. But guess what else is working? Your patterns. And so when God blesses you with more, you have a pattern of giving up what God blesses you to people you feel guilty around. So God keeps blessing you. You don't steward over it and y'all all be broke together. And I just feel like I can't lead a hood. God put the team on my back. You need a savings account to put the team on your back. You're trying to help other people with their relationships. And the time you talking to little Bebe and little Ray Ray, you should shut up and go to counseling with your spouse. Okay. Because your pattern is working too. So Pastor Mike, all right, all right, I know I need to check my pattern. How do I change my pattern? I'm glad you ask. Because how did Jacob get his pattern changed? Does anybody remember? Y'all don't read your Bible. Does anybody remember how Jacob got his pattern changed? This is Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all liars, 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 liars. How does the pattern change? He wrestles with God. Uh-oh. That means anytime you wrestle, one person wants one thing and the other person wants another thing. Anytime you're wrestling with God, it's a metaphor for saying you want it to be this way and he wants it to be this way. And we fight with God over who's going to get pinned down. And you know the thing that most of us wrestle with is when God asks us for our patterns and we kind of like, well, Lord, this has been with me my whole life. 
It's kind of how I do my thing. <laughs> this is kind of my regular mode of operation. <laughs> I get in a relationship for about three weeks. <laughs> it starts to go good. I self-sabotage because I think they're going to find out who I really am. <laughs> and then it repeats itself. God says, will you, will you let me change your pattern? Let's, this is what I feel like God's saying. Let's wrestle. Not wrestle. Country, Oklahoma, let's wrestle. <laughs> like that. I'm talking about people who like go bass fishing. Uh, what was it? What is not bass fishing? What is it? Uh, what is it? Noodling. They, they, these are the type of people that put the hand in a fish's mouth and let's wrestle. Like that. I feel like God's asking all of us, if you really want your damage to no longer have you, we're going to have to check your patterns. And I'm ready to fight you over your patterns. Let's wrestle. Let's see who wins. Jacob comes out of this wrestling match with God. It says his nuts, his hip out of socket. Because when you wrestle with God, you're going to feel it. <laughs> He's not going to let you think that you can come like you're almighty. And you're not going to walk away from the wrestle. What you been doing, Jacob? You know, me and God. Uh, <laughs> but Jacob had the presence of mind to say, even though, watch this, uh, I'm going to walk out of this thing with a limp and I'm not going to win. I, I'm going to stay in this until you bless me. Now, I just want to let you know that the blessing was not that my, my hip didn't look like it got jacked up. For the rest of Jacob's life, you know what the real blessing was? That his name was changed. He said, because you decided to wrestle with me over your patterns, you have proof that I beat that. Uh. <laughs> but now I'm going to change the, the, the pattern. When you wake up and you walk out, everybody calls you Jacob, which literally means heel grabber. Somebody that will manipulate and bring down. He said, I'm going to change your name, and now your name is Israel. So every time, there is nothing more pattern changing than somebody changing your whole name. I mean, imagine if your name is Shirley, and tomorrow everybody starts calling you Fantasia. That would be a change of pattern. And God says, I'm the only one. That if you give me your patterns, I'll change your name. Pastor Mike, make it practical. All right, I'm going to show you. Because everybody wants to promise. But I'm going to show you your patterns. Put it up on the screen for me because I want this to be very practical. We have patterns that prophesy. And I'm going to show you how we can change this thing. We have a pattern. We have the product of our pattern. And then we have a promise. I literally could do 40 of these. But what I want you to do this week is I want you to write this chart down and I want you to make it personal for you. I don't want you to just come here and hear me speak on Sunday and be like, that was good. It's not good unless it works in your life. And so I need you to change the pattern. Maybe this week you don't just listen. Maybe this week you actually follow up with meditation around, God, what are you trying to say to me through this message? So I want everybody to do this exercise. Money of our patterns is no sleep, no rest. How many people could use an extra month of sleep right now? Come on. A whole month. Don't call me. Don't ask. Feed me through a tube. And put a catheter in because I don't want to get up and go to the bathroom. Like, extra month of sleep. But that no sleep in the pattern, no rest in the pattern, scrolling till 4 a.m. in the pattern, and got to get your school kids to school at 6, like, it's the pattern. The product is anxiety. Every day, all the time, I'm forgetting something. I don't know what's going on. What's happening? And, and you, can, you can counteract it with the promise 
of peace. He's the prince of So you need to lean into the promise so it can change the, and you get a different product. We need to lean into the, God, you are the prince of peace. Your word says that you give peace that passes all under. I don't understand why my kids are so bad. I don't understand why I'm not in a better financial position. But God, you can give peace that passes all that. So today I pray about everything. I bring everything to you with thanksgiving. And I'm believing that you're going to give me peace, which changes my. And everybody wants the promise without changing the pattern. Let me give you another one, okay? You have a pattern of hiding things. Some of y'all got accounts that you done forgot to pin to. So much stuff, other places. So many things just to back up in case the backup plan doesn't back up. Nobody has access to your email or your phone. Identity theft. The enemy's already stole that. You're trying to protect something that you can get back. Your soul is the only thing you can't get back if you let the enemy take it. But you're hiding things, so the product is what? Addiction. Do you know how many people are addicted to things in here? And you don't even consider it addiction because it's your pattern. Oh, God. We give patterns a pass. Because they please us. Okay. How many people get pleased by having something sweet late at night? Come on. Ooh, ooh. Sound like a siren in here. Because it pleases us, then we rationalize. It ain't that bad. It's only four cookies. She said it's only six. <laughs> It's, it's only four cookies, but four cookies times 20 nights. Y'all know what I'm saying? Somebody tried to call me out. What is it, Pastor? You got a calculator. You should help me. Help the man of God. But four cookies times 20 nights is 80 cookies. What if you went to the store every time and said, please give me 80 cookies. I'm about to devour them. <laughs> we don't think about it like that because what the enemy does is he desensitizes you to make it a pattern that you're acceptable with. But the end result is still forfeiting your promise. I'm trying to give y'all practical things. Okay? But the promise of God for everybody that's Struggling with addiction is what? Whom the sun sets free. It's free indeed or free in action. Okay, let me give you another pattern. Comparison. Uh-oh. Because some of y'all been in here all service. You ain't even looking at me. You look like one of them chickens. Look at their clothes. Look at their van. Look at their like. And the product of your comparison, watch it, insecurity. I don't even understand. There are more beautiful people in this world who don't think they're beautiful. More creative people in this world that don't think they're creative. More talented people in this world that don't think they're talented. It's not the product of your talent or your beauty or your giving. It's the pattern of comparison. The quickest way to devalue something great is to compare it to something else. But what do we do? We have a promise from our God. Confidence. I am who God says I am. He that began a good work in shall be faithful. To, like, y'all, we need to lean into the promise so we can change the pattern and get a brand new product. Last one. I need y'all to do this this week. Do not play me. Because all of your pattern, and okay, let me help you. It's easier to start with the product than it is to start with the pattern. 
Because y'all are like, what's my pattern? It's so normal you don't even know. The product, start with that. What do you do that you don't like? What do you do that if everybody knew you did that, you would cringe on the inside? Start with that. Okay, can I be honest? For years, I wore Spanx. Now the ladies are laughing because they know what those are. <laughs> Men, not so much. The dudes from Australia are like, Spanx, matey, what is <laughs> Spanx? Instead of working out and committing to healthy eating, I wanted to change the product that if I would come out here in a, I mean, full body, like from here, whole, I had to get help to put it on. <laughs> like, and I would be in full wrestler suit <laughs> under all my suits under, because I wanted to quickly change the product. But I wasn't committed to changing the <laughs> So I was uncomfortable every day up here yelling crazy faith and still look fat. Still, still felt insecure and uncomfortable because I was giving an illusion of the product. But what God wanted to check in my life was the pattern. He said, Michael, two years from now, you won't have to wear it if you will walk every day. God, I'm walking. No, no, no. Not to the refrigerator. Come on, some of us be trying to use stuff as workout. It ain't a workout if you're about to just eat it all back up. Stop. I walk to Krispy Kremes. That is not your workout. And Sunday mornings, before I come out here, 6 a.m., I'm up every Sunday. And my trainer, Vic, is at the house. Get up, big dog. Why? Because I had to address my if for some reason, my jacket and my shirt fell off. So she was like, wait, don't do it. I'm not, it's not an example, stop. <laughs> I would not be ashamed of what my vulnerability would have for you to see. Not because it's perfect, but I've changed my pattern. And because I changed my pattern, it has radically changed Romans 12, 2, this is where we'll end. Do not conform to the... I love when the Bible just samurais people. Stop conforming to the patterns of your coworkers. Stop conforming to the patterns of your parents' traditions. Stop conforming to the patterns of your favorite social media star. He said, don't conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your, not the renewing of your wardrobe, not the renewing of your house, the renewing of your mind, okay? Very quickly, how do you change a pattern? What I was doing on the beat, how I changed the pattern, number one, Take the pattern. Acknowledge what it is. How many of you know you have a pattern right now that you want to change? Hands in the air. Okay. Can we admit it this week? I need everybody to write down five patterns that they need to change. Acknowledge it. I cuss too much. She said, oh. I hate churchy people. Because if you slam your hand in the door, Somebody said, Jesus, for most of y'all. But we want to change it into that. So, so, so I'm asking you, I go off on my kids too quick. 
as soon as they do something, I punish them instead of discipline them. Punishment is with emotion. Discipline is for the, the act of teaching for the future. Many of us mess up discipline because we punish. And now it's another trauma wound for your child. And they're going to act out anyway because they feel like you don't see them. What I'm saying is, let's just admit we do it. I, I keep saying it, but parents, and I'm a parent, and, and the greatest parent sin is pride. Just admit you forgot the treat you told them you was going to get them. That's way more integrous than saying, you don't need no candy anyway. <laughs> what, what, you told me that if I got an A, you were going to get me a candy. Daddy forgot. I'm sorry. I made a promise to you, and I forgot about that promise. I'm going to make it up to you, and I need you to forgive me. Do you forgive, Daddy? I am so sorry. Do you know what that teaches generationally? So take, everybody say, take the pattern. Take the pattern. Number two, break the pattern. Break the pattern. If you're going to do something else, you have to break the pattern that you've been in, and you have to abandon what was. For me to start working out, I had to break the pattern of sleeping in. I just gave you a hack. Because we always think that the thing that breaks the pattern is in the field that we're trying to create the promise. But when I decided to work out, I had to break the pattern of sleeping in. And I loved sleeping in. But the only time in my schedule that I could actually work out was in the morning before them kids got up. So to get a brand new pattern, I had to break a pattern that I loved. What are you willing to break to get the promises? Number three, everybody say, take the pattern, break the pattern, make the pattern. Arrange what you desire it to be. Stop talking about, I don't have the product I want. Make the pattern you want. You don't want to be broke? Live in a house you can afford. <laughs> okay. I, I know it sounds like it's super simple. But like, you don't want to eat out all the time? Cook. Well, that means I've got to have to learn how to cook. That means you're going to start a new pattern to break. You want to have good friends? Be a good friend. Nobody calls and checks on me. No, you don't call and check on nobody else. Okay. Take the pattern. Everybody say, take the pattern. Take the pattern. Break the pattern. Break the pattern. Make the pattern. Shake the pattern. Now, some of y'all are so committed to the tradition of your pattern that it's been the same for 42 years. No, 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 no. I sit on the front row. Everywhere I go, they make way for the anointing that's coming in. My train is filling the tempo as his train. Like, okay. Maybe you don't need to sit on the front row. Maybe you need to serve in kids. Maybe, maybe you don't need a title in this next season. Maybe you need a task. Okay. Let God shake the pattern. He'll take what you thought was your thing and change it just to see if you were committed to him or the thing. Me producing music, I thought that was it. I thought that what, what, how God was going to get glory from my life. And God was like, yeah, build a studio. Don't ever work in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want you to have something that you would have considered the apex of your musical career up until this point. And instead of idolizing it, look at it every day. And know that I'm telling you, you can't do that. Huh? He shook the pattern. 
And I would not be standing here today ministering the word of God, touching thousands of people's lives by something I was not even good at at the time he told me I had to kill what I was. He shook the pattern. And what I'm saying to you is maybe the career that you're about to retire from is not the place of God's greatest glory in your life. I'm just saying to you, maybe what everybody knows you for up until now is not what you will be known for when you go on to glory. What if he wants to shake the pattern? What do you mean, Pastor Mike? Be available for edits. The crazy thing about that beat that I made, if an artist gets on top of that beat, Depending on what melodies they sing, we would have to edit what I played. It's felt good with no singers on top of it. But if a singer got on there and went to another chord, we would have to change every, we would have to edit what was there because something greater was supposed to come on top of it. Okay, I got to move. Everybody say, take the pattern. Break the pattern. Make the pattern. Shake the pattern. Bake the pattern. The thing I love about baking is baking takes time. You can't bake nothing quick. And most of us, when we commit to a pattern, God do it in two and a half days. If uh, God, I'm just letting you know I got things coming up. So in the next 72 hours, I need you to work this miracle. Abraham had to wait 25 years. Will you allow God to bake this pattern? Will you allow him to take all the pieces of your life and he'll say, all right, just set it right there and give it time and then watch the other one. Fire. You can't bake nothing without heat. <laughs> this is why most of us lose. It's because as soon as it get hot, take me out. Woo! Woo, it was hot in there. That accountability thing, that was too hot for me. Telling the truth, therapy, mm -mm 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 -mm. But God, I want your will. Change my patterns, Lord. He said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me put you in some time and some heat. They misunderstanding my intentions. I, uh, no, no, no. Got to get out of that heat. And God's saying, would you trust? That I don't just provide fire for you to be hot or hurt. I provide fire to purify you. The only way gold is purified is that it has to be put in fire. And I think about those Hebrew boys that wouldn't bow. God is so good that anytime he puts you in fire, he comes and stands in it with you. And for many of us, God's changing the pattern of our lives. And you don't have to wrestle God if you obey. I don't think Jacob had to be walking around for the rest of his life with evidence that he was disobedient. Some of you have evidence. The scars and the pain are evidence that you just didn't listen the first time. And God's saying, you don't gotta in your marriage, in your life, and you don't have, if you would just change the pattern. Would everybody stand all over this building? It's so beautiful when I think about patterns because even though a lot of our patterns have created problems, you know who else has a pattern? Jesus. A few patterns that I thought about is it says in the word that his grace and mercy are new every morning. That's a pattern that every day you mess up, as long as the sun comes up, new grace, new mercy. Everybody say, that's a pattern. Mm -hmm. He has a pattern. He says, I'll be the friend that sticks closer than a brother. Every time you feel lonely, he said, oh, uh -uh. my pattern is to get up on you and let you know I'm with you. Even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you don't have to fear any evil. Why? Because his pattern is to be with you. Yeah. He's Jehovah Jireh. 
Somebody say, my provider. That's his pattern. He's Jehovah Shalom. He's my peace. Everybody say, that's, my pa- that's his pattern. Okay. What are you saying, Pastor Mike? This is what I want you to get. Your pattern has to change, but God's pattern never does. This is how you can walk in confidence because God's not about to drop you. He's not about to leave you. So in this damaged but not destroyed series, week six, I came to just ask you to check your patterns. I want you to for real write down that list. What are the things you know? I don't want to do that no more. I don't want to have to go to alcohol to deal with and I don't want to have to go to gossip. Because everybody be like, alcohol, yeah, we, yeah. Gossip. You are toxic. And everything you touch with your words dies. You want to change that? You got to address the pattern. As I was preparing for this message, the Holy Spirit said, Michael, here's a few things I need you to address. I said, Lord, this message for the people. (laughs) I'm your humble servant. I'll give it to the people. But me and my wife have been in communications that haven't been, we ain't been, we ain't been clicking two days. Just ain't been clicking. And I'm just sharing vulnerably. Bree and Aaron sitting in the room with us. We arguing. Make sure you have friends that can sit in rooms while you argue. No, it's really good. And, and I know some of y'all wouldn't allow that to happen because you don't trust them. But, but sometimes you just need people to be there as mediators. I'm still leading the church. I still got to preach on Sunday. I still got to do all that stuff. But, but this is his bride. That's mine. See, y'all miss that. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit, as I'm preparing to talk to you about the, 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 the patterns that prophesy. He said, all right, here, come here, baby. Come here, son. This and this is a pattern. I need you to come to me and I need you to take it. I need you to break it. I need you to make it. I need you to what? And I need you to allow it to bake. And by this time next year, the communication is going to be different. The product's going to be different because today you're going to start a brand new, everybody shout at me, pattern. If you know there's a pattern in your life that needs to change, hands lifted right now. Father, I thank you that we're doing the first step. We're acknowledging (laughs) that we got some stuff that our pattern needs to change. And God, you are the pattern breaker. You literally stepped out of eternity to break the pattern of sin in the life of humanity. And today we know that the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is available to all of us right now. There is no sin, there is no temptation, there is no habit, there is no vice that is bigger than the name of Jesus. So today, God, we're asking you to interrupt our generational patterns, the generational habits, even what some would call the generational curses. Father, you broke the curse through what you did. Let us not believe lies anymore. Father, every addict, every liar, every manipulator, every self-righteous person, every greedy person, every person that manipulates with their words, today, God, we're asking you, help us change our patterns. And when you ask us to give up something, Father God, give us the wisdom not to wrestle with you. Let us trust that what you have for us is better than what we've had on our own. Today, God, we're ready for the heart surgery. And when you put us in fire, I thank you that it's not to hurt us, it's to heal us. That you're taking this group of people from trauma to triumph. Do it from the inside out. If you're in this room right now, And you know that you need to make Jesus Christ your personal Lord and Savior. There's something happening right now in this place. You're saying, God, I want you 
I want you to do the work on the inside of me. And I want to accept Jesus as my Lord. On a count of three, whether you're in the room or you're watching online, you're watching on rebroadcast, somebody sent this to you. On the count of three, I just want you to shoot your hand up in the air. People are praying for you and God's doing a work all over this room. I don't know if you sense that. This is not the time to run out. Today, God is about to do something on the inside of you. If you want to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior, on the count of three, just lift your hands. One, you're making the greatest decision of your life. Two, it's going to make you a progressing person. I went from being a liar, a manipulator, addicted to pornography, and now God's doing a work in my life that's progressive. And your name is going to be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. If you're ready, three, just shoot your hand up all over this room. I see you. I see you. I see you. I see you. Oh, come on, y'all. Come on. I see you. God sees you. All the way in the back, I see you. Glory to God. Now, Transformation Church, ain't nobody perfect in here. So we pray together as a family for the benefit of those who are coming to Christ. Just lift your hands and say, God, thank you for interrupting the pattern of sin in my life today I ask you be Lord I believe you lived you died and you rose again with all power take my life I'll serve you forever change me renew me transform me give me new patterns in Jesus name amen can we celebrate every person? Oh, y'all can do better than that. Let's celebrate what God is doing. And listen, before everybody runs out, the altar workers are coming. This whole week, God's going to show you, everybody shout at me, patterns. Don't ignore the patterns. Bring all your patterns to God. And I want you to put your stuff. I gave you practical things to do this week. But the first pattern that you should make is a pattern of prayer. If you bring everything to God in prayer, it changes everything. We say around here, prayer is not a last resort. It's our first response. So when something goes bad this week, pray about it. Pattern. When you're angry, pray about it. It's a new pattern. And I don't want you to leave this building or online without getting prayer. I'm going to ask the worship team to come up and everybody's about to be dismissed and I'm believing this is going to be the best week of your life. But some of y'all need to start the pattern of prayer and you need to come get agreement. If two or three would gather in his name about anything, things begin to change. Father, I thank you for blessing the people that have come today. Thank you for doing a work on the inside of us. Thank you for a brand new pattern that is starting. Speak, Lord. We're ready to hear from you. Have your way in us and through us. In Jesus' name, we agree. Somebody say amen. amen. Hey, listen, if you gave your life to Christ for the first time, I want you to get the QR code that is on the screen. And I want our team is going to send you some resources to help you create brand new patterns. Get in a small group. I feel the presence of God right here. You need to get around people that can help you change your pattern. And if you need prayer, husbands, wives, children from all over this place, I want you to come right now. Go out and live a transformed life. Oh, I feel the presence of God. Come on. Hey, I want to take a moment again before we jump off and say thank you. Our church is not built on one individual, but on the sacrifice of so many. And you being a part, it means the world. So thanks for watching the message. I also want to say thank you to the thousands of people around the world who are generous. It means the world. And we are able to represent, we're able to be generous, to meet the needs of people because of your giving. If you haven't taken the step to give, trust me, there is no pressure at all. But if you feel led, you can text the word GIVE to 828282 or you can go online. When we partner together, God uses our generosity to make a difference. Again, if you haven't, take a moment to subscribe to the YouTube channel. And more than watch it on YouTube, join us on Sundays. Every single Sunday we're here, 1045 CST AM. We would love to see you. And like we always say, go out and live a transformed life.